the French defense is the opening e4, e6. e6 prepares the pawn advance d5. Most games continue d4, d5, and here white has four very popular alternatives. White can play the advance variation with e5, the exchange variation e takes d5, or white can develop their queen's knight to either c3 or d2. If white makes one of the queen's knight moves, then black can capture an e4 and enter what's called the Rubinstein variation, the subject of this video, and white will recapture the pawn. So you can get to the same position two ways. Another possibility is knight d2, and then the exchange of pawns. So here you can see that white has more space than black because of the central pawn situation. Um, black has a problem bishop on c8, and he needs to decide how he's going to develop that. It's behind this pawn on e6 right now. Black eventually would like to challenge white's center and space advantage by playing c5. There are two um, common moves in this position for black, two different plans we'll take a look at. One prioritizes developing this bishop. Um, you could fianchetto the bishop, but most players don't want to do that because playing b6 weakens all the light squares on the queen side. So one possibility is to develop the bishop to d7 and then to c6. And when you do that, that's known as the Fort Knox variation. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Another plan is just to keep that bishop at home for a while, develop it later, and develop the rest of your pieces. Uh, the natural square for the king's knight is on f6, but black doesn't want to play it immediately because if white exchanges, black would rather not bring the queen out early. So black prepares that move by playing knight to d7 first, and then knight to f6, so if white captures on f6, black can recapture with the knight. And the move knight d7 is called the Blackburn defense. So let's look at the Fort Knox variation first. So here's the French defense. And after exchanging on e4, we enter the Rubinstein. So the Fort Knox begins bishop d7. So again, the intent is to play that bishop to c6. So once it goes to c6, it will be attacking the e4 knight, and white would like to guard that knight with the move bishop to d3. But when you move bishop to d3, you're cutting off your queen's defense of your d-pawn, and black's queen will be hitting that pawn. So in addition to bishop d3, white needs to also play knight to f3 to support the d4 pawn. So white's next two moves are going to be knight f3 and bishop d3, and they can be played in either order. For example, knight f3, bishop c6 attacks e4, so white guards it with bishop d3. Or another possibility is to play bishop d3 first to pre-guard the knight, and then bishop c6, and then knight f3 to guard d4. So either way, we get to this position. Now, the Fort Knox variation is supposedly a very solid, hard to break down defense. It's named after um, one of the most secure vaults in the world. It's in Kentucky, Fort Knox, and it houses a large portion of the official United States Gold Reserve. Um, but I think a better description of this variation is just simply to call it passive. Okay, I think the bishop on c6 is misplaced. It's blocking the c-pawn. The c-pawn would like to advance to c5. And this misplaced bishop often finds itself having to exchange for one of white's knights, giving white the bishop pair. Let's see a typical development of forces on both sides. So black can play knight d7 to prepare the move knight f6, castles, knight gf6. Now white would not 
relieve Black's pressure here by exchanging knights. He wants to keep as many pieces on the board as possible to keep Black's position cramped. So he can retreat the knight to g3. Bishop to e7, developing. Rick e1, castles. Now c3 supports the d4 pawn. Um, it may need support if Black exchanges on f3 then both the queen and the knight would no longer be supporting d4. Rook e8, bishop f4, sensible development. And here, black simply doesn't have many useful moves to continue. You can see black is still suffering from a lack of space. Uh, one potential plan that's pretty slow is to push b6 and then retreat the bishop to b7 so that c5 can be pushed. Uh, maybe the queenside light square weakness won't be as bad now that the king has been castled, but most players will simply exchange that bishop at this point. And then queen takes f3 and that queen is hitting the b7 pawn. So black defends it by playing c6 continuing to be cramped and black has failed to push to c5 at any early stage in the opening. So I prefer white here. White has the bishop pair and more space. So let's look at another variation in the Rubinstein called the Blackburn defense. So here's the French, and exchanging on e4 leads to the Rubinstein. So knight d7, preparing the move knight gf6. Knight f3, sensible development, lending support to d4. Knight gf6. Now, white does typically exchange knights here on f6, and then plays bishop to d3. Uh, that's the most natural square to develop that bishop to. Now, black gets in the move c5 right away here. There's no reason not to play it. C5 is supported by the f8 bishop. And white uh, castles. You can take the pawn on c5, but it simply helps black's development. So castles. C takes d4. Knight takes d4. And white didn't defend, didn't further defend d4 because it's defended by a tactic. Uh, black cannot take that knight because bishop to b5 check loses the queen. So instead, uh, black will play bishop c5. Now we'll stop the line here, but I'll note that the knight on d4 can retreat either to b3, gaining a tempo on the bishop, or sometimes it retreats to f3. White's also going to develop their dark squared bishop to g5 to pin the knight. And black will get their light squared bishop into the game by playing b6 and bishop to b7. And I think black has already equalized in this position. So I would prefer the Blackburn defense over the Fort Knox variation. All right, that's it for the Rubenstein. Thanks for watching the video.